Welcome to this section on light beam induced current mapping of organic solar cells. My name is Mikkel Jørgensen and I come from the solar group at the Department of Energy Conversion and Storage at the Technical University of Denmark. Here's an outline of what I'm, what I'm going to talk about today. I'll first briefly touch on about how we measure and characterize uh, organic solar cells, um, ways of uh, detecting um, electrical defects. I'll talk a little about the standard LBIC or light beam induced current technique, which is used to map the solar cells. And then I'll go into uh, our improved design for the instrumentation, which is much faster. Uh, we have the capability of using multiple wavelengths. Uh, we have different mapping uh, types of the organic solar cells and perhaps most importantly we can do what is called contactless measurements, that is we do not need to create direct electrical contact to the solar cells while uh, we do the measurement and that has opened up for the possibility of doing roll-to-roll -roll, uh, light beam induced current mapping. And finally, I'll round off with uh, an experiment that you can do yourself at home, a do-it-yourself LBIC, which only requires uh, your computer, uh, some uh, simple instrumentation and your own ingenuity. So the way that we characterize solar cells normally is by doing an IV measurement. So we uh, measure the current output of the solar cell while we step through uh, a voltage range and then we get a curve like the one that you see here. From this curve we can estimate or measure the efficiency of the solar cell, the highest uh, voltage you can get out of the cell and the highest current. And if there are some electrical defects in the solar cells this will be manifested uh, in the form of this curve, but it is only a global information. It doesn't tell us where in the solar cells the defects are. For this we need some kind of mapping technique. And the one that um, we use here, uh, the light beam induced current uh, technique, it is also called laser beam induced current technique, or even uh, external quantum efficiency mapping. Then you get a picture that, like the one below, uh, where you can see how well the solar cell functions at a given point. And there is a, a third uh, technique which is called uh, thermography, which measures the heat uh, output of the solar cell, and this is um, the subject of a separate lecture in this series. But I'll briefly touch upon how the two methods are uh, connected. So the standard LBIC principle is shown here. So we have a light source, typically a laser positioned over the solar cell, which is connected uh, to a source measure unit. So we move the laser source around to scan the solar cell while we measure the output at each position uh, from the solar cell. So we set the voltage to zero and measure the current and the computer then converts the current values at each point uh, and assigns a color to it. So if you want to map, say, a 10 by 10 uh, centimeter solar cell at 100 micron resolution, you get about a million points. And if each point takes about 25 milliseconds to measure, uh, you have time for moving la the laser, and time for uh, getting extracting the current. This will take about seven hours. So here we scan uh, over the solar cell and then the computer then generates a map like the one shown on the right. So a very slow uh, but useful technique of course. And we uh, initially built an apparatus of, of that kind and used it for uh, some different measurements on the solar cells that we prepared. Here's an example uh, where we had some rather small solar cells, about a square centimeter, and we tested different types of silver inks. 
uh, used for creating the electrical contacts to the solar cell. We had three different uh, silver inks, yeah, one is which is heat cured, and one which is UV cured, and finally a water-based uh, ink. And what we saw in these images is that the heat cured ink destroyed the solar cell action immediately uh, where it was in contact with the solar cell, while the UV uh, cured ink uh, worked all over. So of course, based on these images here, we could uh, select the UV curable uh, ink as uh, the best one. So this showed that uh, Elpic was a valuable tool uh, for uh, extracting information like this. Here is another uh, example of the same. Here we have uh, the same three different types of silver ink. Um, and in this case, the silver electrode has been made somewhat larger. Uh, so you see the effect of how uh, the heat curing ink destroys the solar cell function much more readily. So because this technique was so slow, but uh, obviously very useful, we tried to find uh, other ways of, uh, to improve this technique, make it much faster. Uh, and we have made a new improved version of uh, Elpic that is much faster. And uh, if you are interested in the uh, details about this, I will refer uh, to this article that we published in Advanced Optical Materials in 2014. So the setup is shown here. Uh, we still have a laser. This time it's uh, fixed. And the way that we move around uh, the uh, beam, uh, the light beam, is uh, using a mirror that is controlled by two motors. A fast uh, rotation in the X direction scans uh, in that direction and then we have a slower rotation in the y direction. So we create a sort of raster pattern uh, and the signal is picked up by uh, some custom electronics that amplifies the signals, sends it into an oscilloscope where we get a whole X scan in a very short time and transfer that to a computer. So a scan in the X direction is some 2,500 data points, and this takes about 0.01 second, which means that the 1 million data points can be uh, taken up in about 4 seconds. So the increase in speed for, say, a 10 by 10 uh, square centimeter uh, solar cell is 7 hours for the standard LBIC techniques and about 4 seconds uh, for the new improved version, or about 6,300 times faster. Here's the result for a single 1 by 8 centimeter solar cell, and you can see the uh, photograph of uh, the cell in the top part of the image. Um, there are two grid electrodes, and then you have the Elbic image in the bottom. So the uh, parts of the solar cell that works fine is in yellow uh, and the low performing uh, parts of the solar cell are in blue. And you immediately see that there are two large areas in the solar cell that has some defects and these are not visible in the photograph and you also see a lot of uh, smaller defect, point-like defects along the grid electrodes and the resolution in the picture is about 100 micron. Here's another example showing that uh, organic solar cells are flexible, um, but up to a point. Uh, one of our former students um, crumpled a solar cell, then stretched it out again and performed the Elbic uh, image of the device. And as you can see, it is still a solar cell but where it was creased violently, it has delaminated and you can see uh, where it doesn't work anymore. So you can see mechanical defects in, in solar cells with the LPIC technique also. You can have variations in the 
printing of uh, the solar cells. Here is an example where we have printed the active layer in the solar cells uh, with a technique called rotary screen printing. Um, and that gives a rather uneven uh, film, active layer film. And that is also manifest in, in this picture where you can see that uh, there is a great variation in how well uh, the solar cell performs over the area, the 16 stripes of the, the solar cell. As I said, we can also image the solar cells using different wavelengths of the laser. And this comes in handy, for instance, in a situation like the one that we have here on tandem solar cells. You have two different uh, solar cells, one on top of the other. One takes part of the solar spectrum and the other solar cell takes the other part of the solar spectrum. So if you use um, lasers with different wavelengths, you can address the two different uh, subcells. And you can see that there are defects or areas um, that are not functional very well in one subcell and other parts in, in the other subcell. So you can uh, use this technique to differentiate between defects in different parts of a tandem solar cell. Another very important failure mode in uh, solar cells is if you have particles, electrically conducting particles, that penetrate all the layers from one electrode to the other one. And this can be very serious in large installations where you have high power. And here is uh, an example of a burn through between two electrodes. You have such a, an electrical short that has burned part of uh, the solar cell, actually. This can, for instance, also uh, be imaged uh, thermally, like in, in these images here, where you can see a heat signal uh, from these shorts just before they burn through the solar cell. Here we uh, contrast the um, LB technique with the uh, dark login uh, thermography or thermal uh, graphic image of uh, the same type of solar cell and you can see in the Elbic that some of the cells are not working at all and uh, one of the reasons that this is so is that we have some very serious shorts that create heat signatures in the dark login thermography. And you can see in the uh, one of the images here that this uh, short occurs directly where the uh, grid electrodes cross each other. This new improved Elbic uh, technique uh, gives us some opportunities for making different uh, types of measurements uh, aside from the normal Elbic. For instance, one thing that you can uh, do is called capacitance mapping. If you look at a solar cell, then we have two electrodes, two metal electrodes uh, on each side of an active layer, which is a dielectric material. This is the way that a capacitor is built up. So we could, in principle, measure the capacitance and the uh, resistances associated with this uh, using this Elbic technique here. And this is an example here. We have taken a single pixel uh, in the solar cell and we then uh, turn on and turn off uh, the laser rapidly. Um, we pulse uh, the laser and then we look at how fast the signal intensity builds up in a single pixel and how fast it dies out. And this uh, exponential increase and decrease of uh, the signal is related to how large a capacitance there is in each point. And by having an external uh, variable resistor in series uh, with the solar cell, we can change uh, the, the time constant for this uh, process here. And here's an example of uh, an image of a solar cell where we have a defect. It is visible uh, in the photograph, but not visible in the uh, Elbic uh, image directly below it. 
but then we have these uh, capacitance uh, mapping images and you can see by varying the external resistor value we can bring out uh, this defect that we have there. So this is an alternative measurement method uh, that we can use with this uh, apparatus here. And this leads us uh, to the next point which is contactless LPIC. In all the standard LPIC techniques that we have seen until now, we have put direct uh, electrical contacts on uh, the solar cell to measure the output of the solar cell. But you can also imagine another uh, way of extracting the signal from the solar cells um, if it is a time-dependent signal. If we have uh, external electrodes um, that are situated directly above and below, uh, the solar cell, uh, they will act as a capacitor and if the um, signal from the solar cell varies greatly, then this capacitor uh, will pick up a time-dependent signal. This is governed by the equations that I, I show here. Here you can see how uh, such a contactless design is realized. We have a sketch of um, three solar cells placed in uh, this apparatus where we have uh, capacitor plates uh, above and below the middle cell. And if we then have a time varying signal uh, that occurs when we shine uh, the laser on the solar cell, then uh, the external electrodes will pick up uh, signals from the solar cell. If we look at a single trace uh, across a solar cell, then in the standard mode where we have direct electrical contacts, the signal will change from a zero value when uh, the laser is not situated on the solar cell to a higher level when it enters the solar cell and then it will disappear again when the laser leaves the solar cell. In the contactless mode, capacitive mode, then there will be a a uh, very rapid change as soon as the laser hits the solar cell, then this signal will die out again because there's no change in the uh, output of the solar cell. And then when we leave the solar cell again, there will again be a uh, rapid change. So a quite different way of uh, uh, getting the, the image. And here's how it looks. We have again a photo of the solar cell on top. Uh, we have the normal uh, LBIC image in the middle and we have the contactless image uh, below that. And you can see that we can actually extract the same type of information in the two types of, of LBIC. Um, we still can see the, the large uh, defects and actually the smaller pinpoint uh, defects are highlighted uh, by some kind of shadow effect. So this new um, contactless uh, technique has actually opened up some new possibilities so we can use uh, it as a characterization technique for organic solar cells which are produced roll to roll and it would immediately give us uh, some information about the coating or printing process that we use to, to make the cells and perhaps correct them. And for this to happen, we need to uh, be able to measure at a speed comparable uh, to the speed that we produce the cells, that is about 10 meters per minute. So the main problems that we have had uh, until now is to make electrical contacts to the foil and this we have now eliminated in this contactless uh, version here. Here we have uh, shown uh, the instrumentation that we use, a roll-to-roll -roll, uh, instrument with the Elpic uh, installed on top of it and we have the first version that we used with di direct electrical contacts and you can see the foil uh, moving inside the apparatus here. Then we move to the uh, contactless design. You see a small picture of it here. Uh, we have a 13 meter stretch of solar cell foil uh, with about 160 modules that we have 
uh, image with this uh, contactless uh, LPIC mode here, and you can see that we can pick up uh, larger defects in the solar cells that we can then, then uh, use to, to uh, take out these solar cells or correct uh, the way that we produce them. Finally, I'll talk about a do-it-yourself LPIC experiment that you can uh, conduct at home if you want to. You will only need a computer, um, a solar cell, and a voltmeter. So you connect the voltmeter to the solar cell, you create a black screen on your computer in paint, for instance, and put on a white dot that you can move around. And then you, for each position of the white dot, you uh, note the voltage output of the solar cell. And when you are finished uh, the procedure, do you then translate this voltage value to some color value, and you then uh, construct an, an image, a false color image of that. And that way you can make your own uh, LPIC experiment. And, and this, this actually works rather fine. If you make the um, white spot very small, it takes a very long time, and uh, then you create an image very similar to the LPIC uh, image that we get from the, our instrument, but of course it's a much more coarse image. But you can see larger uh, structures such as, for instance, the uh, stripes uh, that we have in the solar cells, the areas that work, uh, and you can see larger defects. And uh, the the resolution that you uh, get out of this can of course be varied by making a smaller uh, spot, then it takes much longer to get the images. And if you are interested in further details in this uh, technique, you can look up this article uh, that we wrote together with some of the people who inspired it in energy technology in 2013. And finally, I'll say thank you for your attention and I acknowledge the financial support from the European uh, Commission 7 Framework Program uh, through the project of Clean for Yield. Thank you.